Hello. I am just logging on early here um, and we'll wait another five minutes for other folks to log in. Great to have you here. So if you are here, I would encourage you to sit or lie down in a comfortable position. Um, and just start by taking a few deep breaths. Um, definitely lie down if you're comfortable doing that or you can sit up on something um, and, and breathe and take some time to arrive. So I'm taking a risk doing this class outside. I hope you can see and hear okay, but figured it would be nice to bring you to this beautiful lake that I'm I'm at now. So hope that will add to your unwinding this Friday. If you're just joining, I would encourage you to sit in a comfortable position, fly back if you have space to do that, and just take some time to arrive here. You can pay attention to your breath, do any kind of movement, maybe you're holding some tension from the week. And we can just wait another couple of moments for others to join. I'll wait till 4.01.
So just to share some background, if this is your first time logging in with us, um, Hands to Heart Center is um, Yoga for the People, is a nonprofit organization that shares the healing practice of yoga with people affected by addiction, poverty, and trauma in the greater Boston. This beginner session is led by me, one of the community yoga teachers. Really glad to join you today. Um, and Hands to Heart Center would like to thank Boston Public Library for partnering with us on this, on this virtual project. We're really grateful to be working with the Boston Public Library um, on this virtual project. So now that it is just about four, we can get started. Um, we can start again by sitting in a comfortable position or lying down. I'm all about finding whatever you know, posture is comfortable for you where you just, it's not an effort to hold yourself up. It could even be lying in your bed if you're in your bedroom. Um, but let's just take a few moments to stretch out a little bit, move, just kind of casually. These are the things my body <laughs> usually wants to do at the end of a long week of work or life or whatever kind of you've done this week that brought you to this point of arriving. So you can do a gentle twist, you know, really just take a moment to do any movement that feels good. Body, you a couple moments to do that. You can sigh as I just did, just let out a big sigh. And then as you kind of feel like you've gotten most of your wiggles out, come still position and just start to notice your breath. The inhale and the exhale. Notice the feeling of the air moving into your nostrils as an anchor point. your stuff back or for whatever reason that's hard to feel you could even place a hand on your chest or your belly or both and feel yourself breathing from those places again as an anchor point for your attention You might feel a lot of movement in your chest, a lot of movement in your belly, not much in either. The point isn't what you are feeling. There's no right or wrong. It's just actually noticing what is. After a lot of stress or <laughs> a long week, I find it really hard to take a full deep breath. So you relate to that you know, have self-compassion. You might just have really shallow sort of jaggedy breath, right? But remember this feeling because you might notice it feels a little bit different by the end of the class. So you can kind of compare and compare. I'll let you take a few more deep breaths here. Following your inhale. And your exhale. Your inhale. And your exhale. It might be getting a little bit deeper, a little bit smoother now. And you can lower your hands to your thighs. And if you'd like to close your eyes or just take a moment to internally reflect and think about what you kind of, why you came today and what you would like out of this experience, what brought you here, what you're looking for. So when the evening family directors are coming to like gatherings, they're about to bring things to that, but I can also just talk to the family. For me, I think I work at a desk most of the week and I find I'm just all in my head and I forget that I have a body attached to it as I'm sitting at the computer. So this is a time to kind of reconnect to my whole self. 
and get out of my head a little bit. So hopefully you have found it, your own intention for today. You have one more deep inhale. And as you exhale, you can bow your head, lower your hands and raise your head. So <clears throat> when I am sort of amped up from a long week, I don't like to start with too much stillness. I like to move a little bit first. So that's how we're gonna start this class. Um, so you can stand up, let's see. just move the screen. So hopefully you can see me a little bit better. Great, and we're gonna start by moving our shoulders. So you can just start with it up and down. Inhale, exhale. And actually move your shoulders up and down. You can have them tilting a little bit forward and then drop them down and back. A little bit forward and drop them down and back. Continue to breathe. And now naturally, you might start to kind of roll your shoulders around. So the movement can start small. It may grow a little bit bigger as you go. So now you're really involving your chest, getting a lot of movement. And your elbows might be joining to your arms. So now we can exaggerate it and bring our elbows up and around with us. Really opening up front of the chest, rolling the shoulders back down. And now if you wanna go really big, if you don't have too much restriction in your shoulders, if it doesn't cause you any pain, you can bring the arms up and around. Okay. Great. And now we can briefly do it the other way. So rolling the shoulders forward. And then bringing the elbows along if you'd like. And the whole arm forward. And you can see I'm bending the knees, just really getting kind of the whole body involved. Okay. Nice. And now we are gonna raise the arms three different ways, which will have different effect on the neck and shoulders. So you can kind of pay attention to what, what you prefer. So first you can start here, I'll stand a bit off to the side. So lift your arms up um, to perpendicular. Now take them a little bit taller and now you're gonna reach out of your arms so you can see what I just did there. I'm gonna reach through the shoulders and lift your arms all the way up, 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 up. So you're really reaching as tall as you can. And even though your shoulders kind of hiked up, you might notice your shoulder blades recede down your back as you reach up through your fingertips. And now you can lower down. We'll try that again. Now on this time, paying attention, I know you can't really see my feet. I'm tall, it's hard to get <laughs> all of me in the camera, but um, feel your feet your heels rooted in the ground, your toes, you can even wiggle your toes if that helps to get the sensation. And you're gonna really try to feel from the tips of your toes and your heels into the ground all the way through the tips of your fingers on this next one. So again, raise your arms up to that kind of three quarters of the way up and now reach through your shoulders forward and lift your arms all the way up to your maximum. You should not feel any strain in your neck. So if you do, you can have your arms a little bit less um, vertically up. And now again, feel rooted through your heels, up through your fingertips. Take a deep breath into your chest. And lower your arms down. Now we're going to try a different way to raise our arms um, coming up through the side. So I'm going to reach our arms out to the side like so. And now reach through your fingertips. So feel like the action isn't just coming from your arms, it's actually coming from your chest. So this side's reaching this way, this side is reaching that way. Pressing your fingers out to the sides and you're gonna turn your palms to face up 
and not just your hands that are doing this, it's the whole arm is turning. So the hand, the elbow, and the top of the arm. So you might even hold your blades on your back as you do that. And now lift your arms up. And again, reaching through your fingertips. Taking a deep breath. And then coming back to the wide stance. Turn your palms down, lower to the side. So hopefully now you're noticing compared to when we started, there might be more energy swirling in your chest. Hopefully that's a good thing. If you, again, if you're feeling any tension in your neck and shoulders, just ease off a little bit. So, um, sorry, that's my friend walking the dog. Um, okay, so we're gonna try it again, reaching through our fingers, turning the palms, elbow, shoulders up and around. Again, reaching through the fingertips and bringing them up. Feeling our heels heavy in the ground. Lower the arms down, turn the palms and return to standing. Great, and now we can try one last way that sometimes works better if you do have restriction in your shoulders. So you're actually gonna put your hands on, your thumbs on your shoulders, if you can see this here, and bring your elbows kind of up to a Y shape like this. As you do that, you might feel the back of your shoulder blades receding down. And then you just lift your arms up like so and kind of really reach into that Y, that Y shape through your arms. Deep breath. And now bend your elbows again, lower your arms like so. Great. So the next thing we can do, if you have a table, chair, bed, kind of any piece of furniture around you, you can use it for this. It's gonna be one more thing to stretch out our shoulders. So I'm just going to use this old chair here. Um, and if, you know, it's a countertop and you're standing and doing this, that's fine. If it's a low chair like this, you can come to your knees, whatever works. And you're going to just place your elbows onto the piece of furniture. And then you can have your hands in prayer pose like this. So your arms are like this. So you place your um, elbows into prayer kind of press them down into that piece of furniture and now reach your your legs and um, your torso kind of away to get that lengthening through your shoulders, through your upper back. You can just breathe here. Pressing your palms together. Nice. Great. And now you can move that piece of furniture away or come back to your mat if you had to step away for that. <laughs> and just do a quick downward dog, pressing into your hands and your feet and reaching your buttocks up into the air to again, stretch that shoulder area. So you've done a lot for the shoulders. So if you feel a little bit more movement in your shoulders than you usually do in a downward dog, that is great. It makes sense. Okay, and I can walk back your hands to your feet, come back to standing. We'll do one more thing for the chest. Um, here, I'll move the screen again so you can see me a little bit better. So this is called um, Gomukhasana. It's, I think, eagle pose. Okay, so put your palms open like this, like an offering, and now you're going to place your right or any palm, whichever one you choose, your dominant hand um, in front of you, your non-dominant over it so that your elbows are crossed, and now bend at the elbows and bring your hands together. If your hands can actually like touch each other like so, that's fine. If it's just the back of your hand, that's okay too. Just kind of bring your arms together. And now if there's any space, roll your shoulders back a little bit, raise the elbows.
And now we're gonna unwind all of that and switch. So now take your non-dominant hand, your dominant hand, um, bend them, bring the hands together. Hopefully you got all that, I can do it again. So non-dominant, dominant, cross at the elbows, bend up, and now bring your hands together like so. And now like last time, I'm gonna roll my shoulders back, lift the elbows up. You should feel probably some sensation in your shoulders and back. And just shake out your head if you're feeling any tension in your, in your head and your neck. And release. Okay, great. So now moving down the body a little bit, we've spent a lot of time in the head, neck, and shoulders and arms. We're gonna get a little bit of movement into the hips. Again, if you're like me and you have sat a lot this week, I just like to kind of get the joints moving, um, the hip joints, the knee joints, the ankle, the foot. So I'm going to bend and straighten. Just this really simple movement to get a basic action in all of those joints. Like so. And so you lead, your knees are really leading the way. You can watch out that they're not kind of popping out this way or like that, kind of as if you're skiing and they're really just on their track. Or I should try to think of an Olympic sport <laughs> for the Summer Olympics. Like, anyways, you're exactly like on that balance beam or something, like Simone Biles. You're just moving along your own track. And now, actually, you can see my hands kind of started naturally to get involved, but let's make it official. So you can take your hands and glide them along your thighs as you go. So your upper body is sort of getting involved. You're really waking up your quadriceps. And now if you like, you can stay here or with the original movement, but if you would like, you can also do the same with the sides of your leg here. Just kind of just wake them up. And feel that movement through your legs, your hips, your arms. You could do your inner legs as well. Just passing through the inside of the knee. I know we'll do it a few times, really exaggerated. Bring the arms all the way up. Arms all the way up. And last time come to standing. So you might have noticed we're pretty much um, at chair pose at this point so we can do chair pose, so with your hands on your hips, bend your knees, like so, sit into your chair, and come back up. And so instead of your knees leading the way, like we were doing before, try to imagine that your bum is leading the way. So I actually have this chair here. I can't sit quite that low, but I'm gonna pretend that I'm about to sit in that chair. So this time I'm gonna reach the arms up. Again, if you have any shoulder pain, perfectly fine to have your hands on your hips. So reach your arms up and now sit into that chair, real or imaginary, as low as you can. And once you've got into your lowest point, reach through your arms and lift those shoulders, that chest and that, that neck. Inhale and come up. So on the one hand, we're sitting down. On the other hand, we're lifting the chest up, the arms up as high as we can. Let's try that one more time. I'm gonna start with the arms up, bending the knees, sitting in the chair, sitting in the chair, sitting in the chair as low as I can. And now reach through the arms, lift through the chest, and come back up. Nice, okay. So, Coming back to the mat here, I'll try to get it so you can see my feet. All right. Start in Tadasana, which is mountain pose. And again, hopefully your feet are a little bit more awake, your legs, your hips, your chest and shoulders. Hopefully some of that tension of the week is dissipating. And now we're gonna step your legs wide. So not just like shoulder distance or a little bit bigger, as wide as you kind of are brave enough <laughs> to do without feeling unstable. Um, here, I'll move the camera just a wee bit. 
There we go. And then we're really gonna press into our feet. So even though our legs are very far apart and you might not feel like you're standing on your feet, I want you to feel that same weight through your heel that you did when we were standing upright. And as you press through your heels, your legs are working hard. Again, you can remind them from the last movement we did. The energy is moving down towards the feet, but the chest is moving up. We're tall, we're lifted, spreading through the chest. And you can actually place your hands behind you like this to really open up the chest. Now we're gonna reach our hands out and really spread. So now both your feet and your hands are spreading horizontally. Again, oftentimes when we're working or just busy with life all through the week, we kind of are like in this mode, like go, 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 up in our heads, really tied up like this. So this is sort of the opposite idea. We're spreading horizontally and letting our chests, bellies open up, spreading hopefully naturally in this position. If your arms are tired, you can always lower them. But let's all together do those same arm movements. So raise your arm up, reach through your elbows and lift your arms all the way up like so. That was that first way we did it. Now we can try the way, the second way. So arms wide, turn your palms, lift your palms up and lower. And then the third way is taking our thumbs to our shoulders, pointing your elbows up and now straightening your arms into a Y. Okay, and now we're gonna walk our feet in. Your ankles could be tired from standing that way for so long, so you can shake them out if you need to. And now we're gonna step out again, just as wide as, as you can. As I said, like as you're brave enough to do, go as wide as you can, as long as you feel steady. If, if you feel unbalanced, it's not worth it. If you feel unbalanced too, you can stand against a wall and that will help you feel more steady. So model that here. You can stand like this against the wall, okay? So for this next pose, we're gonna stand wide like I showed. And now turn your right foot out 90 degrees. And it's gonna be the foot but also the knee, also the leg are turning all together. Okay, so we can, let's try that again a couple times. So this leg is staying as it is, but then foot, knee, leg, turning out and back. Let's try it again. Foot, knee, leg, down and back. And this one's staying, might have forgotten about it. Let's keep it steady one more time. Not moving, not moving, but this one is turning out. Nice, great. And now we're gonna bend at this hip and come into triangle pose. So bend as far as you can without kind of like bending at your torso here. We want the movement to happen at the hip. So if you can just go this far, rest your hand on your leg, and that is your pose. You can go a little bit farther. You can kind of rest your hand on your shin. Take a few deep breaths here. Press your heels and feet evenly into the ground. So again, you're pretending like you're standing straight up as opposed to being in this triangle position, as in both of your heels have equal weight pressing into the ground. And now, just like we did before in all the other postures, we're gonna lift the chest, open it horizontally as much as we can here. And if you like, you can raise your arm up. If you feel any discomfort in your neck, I would not raise your arm, 
I'll simply gently gaze down towards the back. Okay, now coming back up, bend your foot and your, or your knee, foot back up. We can walk our legs back in. There are some waves in the lake. I hope the audio is still okay. Um, just taking a moment to center here in the standing pose. Now we can walk our feet back out again. And now turn your left foot, knee, leg, all the way out and back again. So just kind of getting comfortable with that movement. You can play with it, go at your own pace, keeping this leg perfectly parallel, but the other one is the one that moves. So kind of just playing with that a few times, rotating on that heel, try to feel the movement all the way up into your hip here. There you go. All right. Now, placing your hands on your hips. Again, we're not bending at the waist like this. We're trying to bend at the hip crease over here, okay? So, bend as much as you can into the hip crease until you've reached your maximum. Does not matter how far you get, truly. The pose is your pose. You can rest your hand on your leg once you've arrived. And again, try to feel as much as you can, even weight in both of your heels. And now, like we did in the chair pose and all of those others, lift the chest, spread horizontally, and if it's comfortable, other arm up. Like last time, if you feel any strain in your head here, just gaze softly at your mat. Never want to add more attention to the neck. And coming back up, up to standing, rotate your leg in, walk back to center and breathe here for a few moments. Now we've done a lot of side to side stuff, so let's just take a moment to do a downward dog. Coming onto all fours, curl your toes under, press into your hands and lift your buttocks up and back. Press into your hands to get some more length through your torso. If your legs are really tight, you can keep your heels up, bend your legs, and really prioritize that, that stretch through the sides of your waist today. There's always different things you can focus on in a downward dog. This is just a suggestion for today, take it or leave it. And now look forward, step into your hands, standing, great. Um, and now we can try another wide-legged pose. So we've done this a few times. You guys are familiar, pressing into the sides of your feet. Legs are working hard, lifting through the belly. And now we're going to lean forward, keeping our legs pressing back and letting our hands, um, rest on the ground here. Now, if it's too big of a stretch, if you have that piece of furniture handy, you can use it. So again, I'm bending at the hips, and maybe if the back of my legs are tight and it doesn't feel comfortable to be all the way at the ground, you can just use any piece of furniture, prop, book in front of you. But that doesn't mean you're off the hook by any means. You're still pressing into your feet. You're still straightening your legs bringing your chest forward in this pose. So I'll show this version of the ground as well. Stay in whichever version is comfortable for you. So again, reminding the legs to straighten as much as they can. Okay, if your legs are tight, very common. 
And now trying to, again, achieve that length through the side of your weight. So your legs are pushing back and your chest is reaching forward. Eyes are soft. Yeah, that's what I was just telling you. Put your hands on your hips. Come back up to standing. Great. And now we are finally going to come to sit down onto the ground into a similar pose, but it's actually seated. So I would recommend sitting up onto like a blanket or a pillow or something. It's hard for most of us to sit flat on the ground. And so I have these blankets here, but you can find hopefully a pillow, a book, anything to give you a little boost. So you can start with your feet out in front of you like so. Press your hands behind you. And again, press your legs down into the ground. Heels, we don't have the floor there anymore, but you can pretend you're still kind of pressing your heels into the ground. And now lifting your chest up and broadening it. So I think you're sensing a theme here with the actions that I'm mentioning. Take a deep breath in. Out. Now we're just going to do a gentle twist to the right. So on your inhale, lengthen your spine. On your exhale, turn. Inhale, lengthen your spine again, and just turn a little bit more. And you can use that hand on your leg to help bring you around a little bit. Okay, and now we can try to the other side. So first let's just start by lifting the chest, anchoring the legs down into the ground. If your lower back is hurting at all, sit on something extra. Even sit in a chair if you are in a lot of discomfort, don't wanna have any pain. And then you can lift your arms up and rotate to the other side, placing your hand on the leg and turning the chest as much as is comfortable. Lifting on the inhale and turning a little bit on the exhale. And exhale and release. Now back to the wide-legged pose. This is the one I was mentioning before, similar to what we did when we were standing. Again, your legs should only be as wide as they can possibly be. If they're way out to the side, but, but better off to just keep them you know, a little bit more in front of you, but you can keep them nice and straight. You can reach through your heels like so. Press your legs into the ground. You can push on your legs like this to really feel that activated energy. And lift the chest again. And we're gonna twist to the right one more time. So inhale up. Exhale, twist, and catch the leg again. On the inhale, you can really lengthen tall and rotate a little bit more on the exhale if you found a little bit of room there. Inhale, lengthen tall. Exhale, rotate. Okay. Back to center. Now we'll rotate to the other side. So inhale, arms up, and exhale, twist. Nice. You can tell we kind of started with a bit more motion, standing up. Now we're kind of in the unwind part of the class. So you're starting to feel a little bit more settled. Okay. Keep your legs out. Pick up your knees. Bring your arms in. We're going to try a few more twists. So keep your right knee bent. Straight to the left. And you can really hold your, um, your 
your shin here, because it can be kind of a little squishy, and really pull into your shin to lift your spine here. Again, if it's hard to lift your lower spine, I would say, got another blanket, got another buck, something along those lines, so you can really get that length into your spine. So we're lifting the spine. Our right arm is gonna go behind us. Raise the opposite arm to the back leg. Inhale, exhale, hook the elbow on the knee, on the bent knee, and press the elbow into the knee, and the knee into the elbow, it's right. Just like last time, I like to use kind of a trick of an inhale, lengthening the spine, and exhale, lengthening a little bit more. And release. And now we can do the other side. So if this is your left side now, bend your left knee, bring your foot as close as it can be um, to, to your seat. And now grasp your hands around your shin, lift the chest up, holding your knee there, finding that maximum length, reach your arm up, inhale, exhale, and twist, and you can make it dramatic. So inhale and twist on the exhale. Really get a good movement there. Try it one more time on each side here. So bring your right knee in. We're going to try another trick for getting a tall length and spine in this. I like this one. You lean back. So if you can see me, I'm leaning back and I'm reaching through that arm and kind of trying to get this area as, as long as it can. I'm spinning around just so you can see me, but you don't have to spin around. So I'm reaching through that arm lengthening this whole side of my body that's going to be twisting soon and inhaling on that exhale going to dramatically come into that twist again one two three twist nice and you might see that you've got it a little bit more movement maybe your arms a little bit farther down onto your knees so pressing your arm into your knee and you into your arm if you're feeling any tension in your neck here I would try instead of looking over the, sh the side that you're twisting, just gently look the opposite way. That can be a nice release for the neck. Maybe look down a little bit. Just like that. And release. So kind of reminding ourselves that we want the whole spine to twist, not just the neck. If anything, the neck can an afterthought. <laughs> okay, so let's try the other side. Again, I'm going to lean back and really reach through the hand and the side of the waist. Inhale and exhale. Twist. So pressing through the back arm, lifting. And again, if the there's any tension in the neck, you can experiment. You can, instead of kind of looking all around the side, you can look to the opposite side gently. You can gaze down softly. So you can even look slightly up. And exhale, coming out. Now we're gonna do one last twist, I promise. I know we've done a lot. It's really good for the spine though, to get things moving, especially us who are sedentary during the week. So I love to do twists at the end of the week. Um, okay, so actually we're gonna have the same leg that was just bent. This might be your left leg if you've been doing the same size as me. And but we're gonna raise the opposite arm. So it's gonna be more of an open feeling in the twist. So same leg and arm. We're 
here. So inhale, exhale, bend the elbow, press it into the knee, and now you kind of have this open twist. It's kind of all down, definite knot like you were doing before. Lift through the front of the body as much as you can. Press the knee into the arm, the arm into the knee, and release. Okay, I'm promising you this is the last one. So give it your all, bending the right leg, reaching up with the same arm as me that is bent. Exhale and twist. Pressing the arm into the knee into the arm, lifting the chest, and release. Okay, nice job. Um, now we can come down onto the mat. Lower yourself down here. Actually, I'm gonna move this chair a little bit out of the way. Okay, so lower yourself down to your mat, like so. That might feel nice after all of those spinal twists, just have an even feeling in your spine. And now actually we can kind of wish wash our knees side to side here, kind of informally doing whatever feels good. And draw your knees into your belly. Now you can do one at a time. So just holding that right leg, draw deep into the socket. Deep inhale, yeah. lower the leg down opposite side, holding the shin or behind the leg, whatever works, and drawing the hip deep into the socket, and lowering the leg again. Now we're going to bring your arms up like so, so your fingertips are touching. You're just going to gently rock your hands to one side of the shoulders, the other side of the shoulders. Very gently here. And now the movement can become a little bigger. So you can kind of feel like you're rocking along the backs of your ribs. So one side of the ribs, rocking smoothly the other side. You want to really get a bigger motion on each side. You reach the arms, so you rock to the outer edge of your ribs. You reach the arms, rock to the outer edge, reach the arms. Great. And I can lower the arms. Sorry, there's a bug, so it's <laughs> plotting that away. Okay. And now bring the arms down to your sides. Raise them above to your shoulders and now bend them into full posts like so. And now you're going to rock your hands forward and back. And just go as much as is comfortable without actually raising your shoulders off the ground. So you're not kind of going like this, right? Your shoulders are glued to the ground and your arm is just kind of moving through its range of motion, which of course is different for all of us. And for all of us, it's even different on different days. So just finding what is comfortable for you. And as you go back, you can tuck the head a little bit, kind of getting the neck and shoulders involved. As you go forward, you can roll through the pelvis. So you kind of get this rocking through your whole body as you go. Do 
eight, seven, six, five, four, three. You can lower your arms down to your sides. And now you're going to pin your shoulders to the ground. Hopefully feels a little familiar from the last thing we did. Press through your feet and lift your hips up. Take a deep inhale here and lower down. So again, lift through your hips, inhale, root through your shoulders, through your feet. And to reach for the right of your spine. So we pull this back on the ground. Now, if you'd like to try this next addition, feel free or you can just keep it as is. So as we lift the pelvis, our arms are coming up and over. So you can really feel the length from your knee through your fingertips. And now walking back over your fingertips. You can just try that three more times. So one, reach through your arms, knees reaching away from you. Two. All right, now for this last bridge, um, we are going to come up into kind of a full classical yoga bridge. So we're gonna bend the elbows, root the shoulders down into the ground, press the elbows into the ground, press the feet and toes. And now we're gonna lift the buttocks like we did before, but then we're gonna lift the chest and the buttocks really as high as we can go without causing any discomfort in the lower back the neck or the shoulders. So whatever your maximum is, pressing through your feet as much as you can, pressing your elbows down to the ground. You can also, another trick you can you can try here is hold the sides of the mat if you have one and kind of pretend you're tearing it apart. That really helps to get that that nice broad feeling in the chest. And lower down. If you felt like I sat on this lower back, your neck, your shoulders there, just stick with the kind of more um, neutral version we did. But if you like that feeling in the chest, let's try just one more. Okay, here we go. So pressing into the feet, shoulders, elbows, and lift the butt, lift the chest, open up. Three deep breaths here. Pressing through the legs. You might feel some burning in your quadriceps. Three, two, and one. Lowering yourself down. Now you can roll over to the side. Do one more downward. And this downward dog isn't really to improve anything. It's really just to get any stretches or wiggles that you want. So decide if you want to stretch the back of your legs, your shoulders, just wiggle at your neck and head, whatever you want here. It's all good. You can bend your knees, bring your toes together. And you're going to lower your buttocks down to your heels. If that's uncomfortable for any reason, you can get that pillow you had and sit on it. And come into a child's pose. Resting your head. Coming into a quiet moment. Five deep breaths. So 
we can do? Um, lift your torso up. <clears throat> down to a few options. I'll give three options. One would be this pose, which is called Supta Baddha Konasana. So you can lower yourself down if you want something for your head, you can have something for your head. And then the work to your body, you press your feet and heels together and come up to your legs and all to the side. Um, sometimes people like to put blanket around or the box or something around their ankles or their knees to support them. But this shouldn't be like an intense stretch. This is actually just a time to relax. So if this doesn't feel good for you, the next thing I would recommend, or it doesn't maybe it feels good but not like too relaxing, I would um, lie with your legs wide. So if you have a mat or you have an imaginary mat, they can be wider than the mat. So like, not like a normal shavasana. So extra wide. And this again, is just nice for getting out of that head stress zone and really feeling that spreading through your body. And again, if for whatever reason, it's hard to lie flat on the floor. And Putting a pillow or blanket under your head and neck. The key here is comfort. And you can decide, you know, what that means for you. I'm going to sit up, but please keep lying in Shavasana in whichever of those three options I, I mentioned. good sign of when you're relaxed is when you are no longer, you know, trying to arrange this or arrange that or, you know, move that body part <laughs> or the other. So if, if you're still kind of wanting to do those things, go ahead and do them, you know, make the changes that you need to make to really become comfortable. And here we're going to Come back to the breath. So following your inhale and your exhale. It is helpful to put your hand on your chest or your belly to feel the breath moving in and out. Definitely go for it. Or sometimes just on each rib can be nice just to have that feedback of the breath moving in and out. Now after doing a class where we moved a lot and then came into some gentle twists, some quieter poses, your breath may be a little bit smoother, a little bit deeper, a little bit quieter than when we started. If not, that's perfectly normal too. It's okay. Just something to notice either way. And something I like to do is um, a prayer. It's called, uh, it's actually a little poem called Begatha. As you breathe in, you can tell yourself, I am breathing in. And as you breathe out, you can say to yourself, I am breathing out. And then on the next inhale, you can tell yourself, I am feeling calm. And on the exhale, you can say, I smile. You can even smile a little bit on that exhale. On the next inhale, Remind yourself that this is the present moment. On the exhale, remind yourself this is a precious moment. So I'll repeat that. Inhale. I know that I inhale. Exhale. 
I know that I exhale. Inhale, I am calm. Exhale, I smile. Inhale, I know this is the present moment. Exhale, I know this is a precious moment. I can even just say one word at a time. So in, out, calm, smile, present, precious. In, out, calm, smile, present, precious. In, Out, calm, smile, present, precious. I continue breathing quietly. for another minute. When you're ready, you can slowly bend your knees one at a time. Roll over to your right side to fetal position. Take your time there, there's no rush. Oftentimes at this point, our brain starts to jump. What am I gonna have for dinner? What's coming up next? Just Remind yourself you're still here. Nothing you need to handle in this last moment. It's really your moment. And slowly bring yourself back up to seated. And thank yourself for coming. I can't see any of you. I'm just swatting mosquitoes. <laughs> I can't see any of you, but I really hope that you to unwind after whatever kind of week that you had. Um, and I hope to see you again soon. Have a great evening and a lovely weekend. Thank you all. And thanks again to the Boston Public Library and to Hands to Heart Center.